Hey, how's it going? In today's video, we're gonna talk about setting up the auto sell artifacts function within RSL Helper, as well as establishing your own sell options to keep the best gear for your account. RSL Helper is a totally free tool to use within Raid, made by a guy named Farbstoff. And if you have the chance, make sure to join his Discord and say thanks. Now, to use the auto sell function within RSL Helper, we can go on the main page and click auto sell artifacts to establish that we wanna sell artifacts within our defined range. If we're not sure that we wanna sell the gear, but we wanna test it, we can click the selling simulation mode. I already have both buttons checked, but if they're not, you simply just check them right here. As far as the main page, those are the two options we have for selling gear. Now, if we wanna choose what artifacts we wanna sell, we can go to the right of auto actions and click on the sell options button. Within the RSL helper sell options page, we have a couple different areas we need to look at. First area is where you can add rules, edit, delete, or load setups and save setups. The second area down here is where you can see all of the, the rules that you establish and what they do and whether or not it keeps or sells an item. Additionally, in here, there's a check mark on the side that we can use to further define if we want this rule to be in place or if we wanna just have it there in case we want to use it in the future. The next area is the sell test area. This is where we can test some of our rules and see whether or not they work. And the final area is the back to auto clicker, which will take us back to the main page of the RSL helper. So in order to create a rule, we first want to define whether we're selling or keeping a piece of gear. For this example, we're gonna sell a piece of gear that's a five star rare. We don't care about the artifact set or the artifact type, as well as the faction or any main stat or substats, just that we want to sell a five star piece of rare gear. We can simply click the add rule and it will go down into our list of rules in the bottom area. We can further check to make sure that our rule is actually in effect if we go over to the sell test area and we test this. In order to do so, we need to set the type, rank, and rarity for a piece. So for this example, we can use some gloves that are five star and rare. Once we do that, we can click the sell check button and we see rule one found, the item is sold. So we know our rule is in effect and it's actively working. Again, this check mark comes up and we have the ability to uncheck an item and click the sell check. And now it says no rule found, item is kept. Whenever there are no active rules working to sell a piece, it will automatically default to keeping the item. We'll check that again, and then we see it works. So we're gonna move on to the next step. Our next rule that we're gonna create is a rule to keep all five-star rare pieces that have a main stat of speed. Now, we know every piece that has a main stat of speed needs to be a boot, so we don't necessarily need to put the artifact type of boot. So we can set that to all or boot, it doesn't matter, but what we wanna do is we wanna click add rule once that's complete. We now have two rules in the system, one that says keep five star rare speed boots and another rule that says sell five star rare all items. We can go over here again and we can check to see if our rule is in effect. We go over here and we choose to select boots and a main stat of speed. We can use the sell check button again. When I click it this time, it still says rule one found item is sold. That's because whatever priority you put your pieces in is how the helper will define whether to keep it or sell it. If we find that we want to keep these five star speed boots, we need to make sure that we prioritize this over selling five star rare pieces. To do that, we simply just click on the item that we want to move and we click priority up. Additionally, if we need to move it down a priority, you can hit that one right here. But we'll move it up above selling five star rare pieces of gear and we can check the sell check again. Now this time it tells us rule one found because we moved our rules and it says item is kept. So everything's working as intended. Additionally, we need to make sure that we prioritize whether we want to sell one specific artifact rank and one specific artifact rarity or multiple from our list. An example of that is when we decide we wanna sell five star pieces of gear or anything lower than five star. To do that, we can simply click on our current rule that we have that's five star rare, and we can click the edit rule button. We know the edit rule is into effect when the additional box of save edit pops up. 
We can now go over to our rank and click on it and go down to the portion that has the angle pointing towards the five. And so we want to click the angle towards the five and the equal sign, which means less than or equal to five star. So we're going to choose five star or less than pieces of gear that are rare rank in rarity. We then choose save edit and we click that. And now our option has changed. We can go in to see that it's in effect by choosing a piece of gear that is anything other than speed. And we can see five star rare. And it says rule two found item is sold. Additionally, if we click four star, it still says rule two found item is sold. Now the reason you wanna change both the rank and rarity to go X rank or X rarity and below is because if we have a four star piece of uncommon and we do the sell check, it now sees no rule found item is kept. So you wanna make sure that you have both rank and rarity with the and or lower portion established. So we'll change that now and we click save edit and we're able to check our sell list and it says roll to found item is sold. So now we know any piece of gear on this account that's five star or lower and rank rarity rare or lower will be sold. You wanna make general rules like this at the bottom of your rule set just in case any pieces slip through the crack. Now feel free to go through and choose any sort of rule sets that you wanna do on your account. If you decide that you don't want to have all of these rule sets established already up here, you simply click this to reset all of the categories within it. If you decide that you don't want to set up all of your rules on your own, feel free to join Farbstoff's Discord where his team has a bunch of pre-made rule sets for you to use for free. Additionally, you can feel free to DM me on Discord and you can use my rule set that I have established already. In order to load a setup, all you need to do is click the load setup button this will pop up where your most recent saves of any sort of rules are established. And you simply click on whichever rule set you want to use and then click open. Once you open that, it will delete all of the rules that were already established on your account. So you want to make sure to save any rules that you had that you wanted to keep. But just know if you establish a rule, you can't combine it with another rule set unless you manually put it in and then save that entire rule set. So we have my rule set now defined. Uh, a couple things that I like to have in mind is to keep all six star legendary pieces. I do this so that any sort of piece that is six star legendary can get rolled up to see if it rolls for a quad. If it's a quad piece, I like to use a chaos war on it so that I can try and get a optimal substat on my piece. Additionally, I have five star legendary pieces kept because I have a lot of five star legendary chaos war and I wanna do the same thing. One thing to note when you're using your cell option rules is you want to define things like reaction or blood shield accessories as their own thing in order to keep them in case your catch all rule at the bottom tries to sell them. One thing I have on mine is a rule for any five star or greater reaction pieces to be kept. Directly below this, I have another rule that's keep all reaction pieces on my account. I set up both of these rules in the case that I decide I want to get rid of my reaction pieces that are less than five star. I have both of the rules in effect right now, but I have the option of unchecking one of them just like I showed previously so that the rule is no longer in effect. I would do this with the one that's for all reaction pieces in case I wanna sell my four and three star reaction pieces. Another thing to note on my rule set is the use of the substat and non-substat items that I wanna use. When I say non-substat items, I mean the ones that have this right here that kind of looks like a upside down backwards L. So whenever a piece has something like that, it means that the item that you're looking at does not contain whatever that substat is. For this example, I have my account selling any gloves that are six star or less, all rarities that don't have crit rate on crit damage gloves. I want all my crit damage gloves to have crit rate because I'm at that point in my account where they're just not gonna benefit me. Granted, above that, I have some rules that might predefine my piece so that it will keep it if it's crit damage and six star, such as six star legendary crit damage gloves without crit rate. 
One thing to note about the substat category is that any rule that has a defined substat within it will check the piece in raid for that substat no matter what position that substat is in. So if I received crit damage gloves and the first substat was speed and the second substat was crit rate, my rule right here to keep that piece would go, okay, first slot doesn't have crit rate, second slot does have crit rate, I meet the criteria of being six star crit damage gloves with crit rate, I'm gonna keep that piece. Additionally, if I have substat two with another substat, it will check any of the slots within the piece for both crit rate and attack percentage. So if it meets the category of six star gloves with crit damage, crit rate, and attack percentage as the substats, it will know to keep those gloves. It doesn't matter if those substats are in slots one and three or two and four or one and two. When I use the minus looking symbol next to a substat, it will know to look for pieces without that substat. So an example of this is when I choose a substat without speed. So now RSL helper will know, okay, I'm looking for gloves that are six star, any rarity. They have a crit damage main stat, a crit rate substat in any of the four substat categories. And out of all of the four substats, none of them are speed. If it hits those criteria, then it'll decide to keep that piece. Typically, you can use the without function for pieces that you want to sell. Another thing to note within the sell options rules is that you have the ability to choose different artifact types. So you can choose the standard helmet, chest, gloves, boots, etc. But you can choose your ring, amulet, banner, or you can do things such as glove, chest, boots, or weapon, helm, and shield. The reason it does it like that is so that you can set a basic rule of one like this, where it's, I'm gonna sell every piece that is any rank, any rarity, if the main stat is flat stat, HP, attack, and defense. And that's for the gloves, chest, and boots. So any main flat stat for the bottom pieces, I'm gonna sell those no matter what. As long as any of the rules that I've defined above this don't manage to keep that piece. You also have the ability to set your artifact type as the amulet, banner, or ring. And you might want to do this so that you can set a rule such as the one that I have at the very top of my list, which is to keep any six star epic or greater banners that have the substat of speed. So it could be an attack banner with speed, flat stat HP, flat stat attack, and flat stat defense, but it'll know I want to keep that piece. And the reason I want to keep those pieces is so that I can roll them to see if I get a triple speed and it will find some sort of use on some character eventually. The last thing I want to talk about is the factions tab. And now this is used for any accessories that you have on your gear sets so that you can choose whether or not you're going to keep something. An example of why you would want to use the factions tab is to keep any banners that are for high elves that you typically wouldn't want to keep for other factions. So in my example, if I just had a new account and I just got Arbiter, I might want to keep banners that are four star that have the speed substat when typically any banner that's four star would normally get sold. I can do this to try and prioritize pieces of gear that might be for a specific champion or a specific scenario that typically wouldn't be covered. Now that I've determined that my, my rules are all set and I want to keep all of the rules that I have, I have the option of clicking save setup. Saving my setup will allow me to go back and load this setup at a previous time or to make changes to the one that I have, save it again and keep continuing to fine tune what I have with the option of going back to a previous version. So if I click save setup, it'll pop up this dialog box and I'll have the option of clicking or writing a new name for my piece. So uh, I don't wanna save this one necessarily, but we can just do illegal mist test and we can click save and now that one is saved so to show that it works i can click on this one that i had created real quick and then i can go and load setup illegal mist test i click open now we have all of our rules established and ready to go and everything is perfect right well 
you might not have had the chance to sell test every single piece of gear that you established for rules. The best way to verify that everything is good is to go back to the auto clicker portion, make sure that your auto sell artifacts is on, but then click selling simulation mode. When you click selling simulation mode, it will show in the bottom right portion, right where my mouse is, it'll show a piece of gear and then it'll show sim sold. To show you an example of that, I'll pull up my RSL helper. So you can see I have both things checked off. I'm just gonna set it to run one raid. So I'll set it to run one raid and then it has auto sell artifacts and selling simulation mode clicked. I can click this button here and then my raid will happen. Okay, so now that the raid is over, we can sell our item. And you'll notice it says sim sold instead of sold like it typically would. That shows that the item was simulation sold, but in my actual game, when I close this window, you can see the item wasn't sold. Now, if I go in and manually sell it, you can see within the helper, it shows sim sold, but then it also shows in big bold letters the item was sold. So the helper knows when it's sim sold and when it's actually sold as well. I'm gonna uncheck this sell simulation mode and I'm gonna run another raid for you. And then you'll see the item isn't sold right now. It gets sold in game and then it's sold on the, on the RSL helper item sold. So that's a great way to test whether or not your rules are actually working or not. Huge shout out to Farbsoft for letting us use RSL Helper for free. If you guys can, please go over to his Discord and let him know how much you appreciate it. And if you have the extra cash, consider donating to him as all of this is free to use. If you like this video, please let me know in the comments below. If you want to watch more videos like this, consider subscribing as I'm going to make more tutorials on RSL Helper and I already have a couple on the channel. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.